What a thrilling life awaits you. The acquisition of knowledge is a sacred activity. A truly educated man never ceases to learn. The future is in your hands. The outcome is up to you. This BYU devotional address with Janie Penfield was given on February 5th, 2013. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our devotional. Today we will have the opportunity of hearing from Sister Janie Penfield, an Associate Athletic Director and BYU's Athletics Senior Woman Administrator. We extend a special welcome to our family and friends who have joined us today. Janie Penfield is in her ninth year as an Associate Athletic Director and the Senior Woman's Administrator of BYU Athletics. She currently serves as the administrator to eight of BYU's 21 NCAA teams and oversees the Spirit Squad as well as other internal operations. Sister Penfield earned her bachelor's degree in, in 1998 in English from Colorado State University, where she was a four-year starter on the women's volleyball team. Following graduation, she competed as a professional volleyball player in Finland and coached volleyball at her alma mater. She coached Division I Volleyball at Boise State from 1999 to 2001 prior to coming to BYU to receive her MBA in 2003. From 2006 to 2010, she served on the NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Committee. As BYU's Senior Woman Administrator, she serves as a representative to the NCAA and is the member of the West Coast Conference Executive Council and the Administrative and Operations Cabinet. From 2003 to 2004, she served as assistant to BYU's Women's Athletic Director. Sister Penfield is a native of Thousand Oaks, California. She is one of seven children and an aunt to 13 nieces and nephews. She enjoys the ocean, Nordic skiing, sewing, and reading. And now we'll have the privilege of hearing from Sister Janie Penfield. Good morning. I'm humbled to be with you today. I'm grateful for family, friends, and colleagues who are in the audience and watching at home to support me. I have prayed diligently over the past months that something I say today will benefit each of us, and as I do that, and I do that now as well. I'm an adventure seeker, especially in the outdoors. I love to hike, bike, swim, and ski. Through my many adventures, I have learned that each one must be planned with clear purposes or objectives to summit a peak, complete a course, or enjoy the views. I have found that planning with purpose is the best way to ensure that each adventure is successful. For example, I love to Nordic ski. As with all skiing, there is a trail map that allows you to chart a successful course through the woods and terrain. My favorite place to ski is at Sundance's Nordic Center, which you're looking at. The trails lead you through evergreen and aspen trees, including views of Mount Timpanogos and frozen Stewart Falls. There are several trails to choose from. Some are out of the way and are less traveled than others. All are surrounded by ungroomed or wooded ground with unknown obstacles beneath the meringue-like layer of snow. Leaving the trail could be troublesome or even perilous. Each ski trek begins with the question, where to? Followed with, which route? Each trail takes us to a different spot with different options for adventure and scenery, a steep climb, a flat meadow, or an incredible view. Before we begin to ski, we must determine the purpose of our trek so we know which trails to take. Then we must ski on course or we will not reach our destination. We are all here on earth as a type of adventure. We left our Heavenly Father to obtain bodies, to be tested, to make covenants, to gain knowledge and experience, and to hopefully return to live with Him. But we do not always remember this purpose. Many who do not have the gospel have forgotten it because of the veil. We often get weighed down by the monotony of school, church, family, and work, and forget about asp our aspirations, aspirations that our Heavenly Father wants us to have. We even get distracted, waylaid by good things. Elder Dallin H. Oaks taught us that as we consider various choices, we should remember that it is not enough that something is good. Other choices are better and still others are best. Even though a particular choice is more costly, its far greater value may make it the best choice of all. 
He goes on to say that we have to forego some good things in order to choose others that are better or best because they develop faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen our families. There are many good things that we can do, but we must stay true to our purpose and live the life of a disciple. We can get married, or better best, we can get married in the temple. We can pray for the missionaries, or better best, we can invite our friends and family to visit them in our homes. Individually, we may become discouraged because of the distance between us and the mortal life we've aspired to. We may not be married, have children, have the degree or success that we thought we'd would give us the life we'd planned. Fame, fortune, fashion, and fun will play a part in our eventual destination, but we have the power to control what role, if any, they play in keeping us on or taking us off the path of discipleship. The collection of choices will determine our final destination. President Thomas S. Monson said, eternal life in the kingdom of our Father is our goal. Such a goal is not achieved in one glorious attempt, but rather is the result of a lifetime of righteousness, an accumulation of wise choices, even a constancy of purpose. So what can we do to ensure that we build a lifetime of righteousness and accumulate wise choices? We can live our lives with purpose, the purpose to gain eternal life and be counted as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Keeping our destination or the purpose of our lives in mind influences our decisions. We are choosing friends, majors, careers, social activities, priorities, and many more things. But the most important decision that we, we must map out is the course to our de destination if we are ever to get there. Where are we skiing to? If we make a conscious decision that we are on the Lord's side, that we are seeking the highest degree of glory in the celestial kingdom, then many of our decisions in daily life fall into place. Knowing that we will not go towards so many other destinations provides us with significant direction. We can make our judgments and decisions based on the decided purpose of our life. Does this friend bring me closer or further from the spirit? Does this major or career allow me to be the disciple of Christ I aspire to be? Does this activity keep me close to the Lord? Committing to achieving the greatest possible outcome from mortality frees us from much of the push and pull of the world. In the last general conference, President Dieter F. Uchtdorf said, the foundational principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ can affect our life's direction for good if only we will apply them. If we want to enjoy eternal life, we must apply the principles President Uchtdorf is referring to and become a disciple of Christ. This is, as he says, the pursuit of holiness and happiness, the path to our best and happiest self. We must plan, plan our lives with the purpose of becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. He says that we can do this by following the Savior, striving to be like Him, listening to and obeying the Spirit's promptings, and devoting ourselves to holiness and happiness. It also includes being baptized, making and keeping temple covenants, and building the kingdom of God. It can sometimes be difficult to remember our predetermined course. The scriptures and prophets counsel us to remember the things of the Spirit, our Savior and the atonement, our covenants and the commandments. Remembering helps us keep proper perspective and focus on our purpose. We must choose to remember. We must remember what we want and why we want it. President Henry B. Eyring taught us that the key to remembering that brings and maintains testimony is receiving the Holy Ghost as a companion. If we live worthy of the Holy Ghost, we will remember our purpose. The Savior taught us in John, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Once we have set our purpose, we must determine our course to fulfill that purpose. We have to make a plan on how we will reach our destination. Last January, there were 12 of us geared up in Wyoming with our skis on, ready to go. It was over, Granite Hot Springs was over 10 miles in front of us. We knew we needed to stay on the road and keep going in spite of the seriously negative temperatures, the hills, and the lack of sunshine. We also planned to take time to enjoy the scenery around us. We had planned to do an out and back route of over 20 miles in a day, and we needed to start early, stay together, keep fueled, keep moving, and stay the course. We did, and we finished the out and back exhausted. 
Just as my friends and I skied on our adventure in Wyoming, we too must be fixed on our course and our purpose. We must continue to press forward despite adverse conditions. We must not be deterred by challenges, big and small, all the while taking in the beauty and wonders mortality affords us. The map to navigate life on Earth has been provided to us through the restoration of the gospel. The standard works, modern day prophets, and inspired leaders help us navigate through the challenges of mortality. Lehi's dream is a broad sketch of mortality. The Latter day prophets fill in the challenges and specific guidance for our day, helping us keep hold of the iron rod. We must determine our course to ensure that our daily choices have a chance of leading us there. We will not arrive there by chance. In Doctrine and Covenants, we read, For straight is the gate and narrow the way that leadeth unto the exaltation and continuation of the lives. We need to be on the path when we reach the gate. With the goal of eternal life, we can know where we can look for direction to stay on the narrow way and to find the straight gate. The scriptures and the teachings of the prophets have provided us with the course for our life here on earth. The path of discipleship is the path that runs within reach of the iron rod. We move each hand and foot in front of the other, progressing as we make the decisions to prioritize the work of the Lord, the keeping of our covenants, and the constant efforts to emulate the Savior. What is on the narrow way? Temple marriage, missionary service, paying a full tithe, keeping the Sabbath day holy, fulfilling your callings, being charitable, and the list goes on. Staying on the straight and narrow path requires consistent, best choices. As a skier, in order to return to the trailhead, you have to take the right trails, turn at the right times, and have the skill to descend the mountain safely. As many inexperienced Nordic skiers have noted, the hills look easy to navigate until you strap on boots that only bind in the front and skis that are slightly wider than popsicle sticks. So we too must chart our course carefully. Where will we turn, go straight or climb? The trail map and the master teachers will give us all of the information that we need. We learn from Elder L. Lionel Kendrick that the guidance we need is in the scriptures. He said, those revelations received by prophets are given to us in the form of scripture or by the, or by the voice of the living prophets. Thus the scriptures become a road map, a set of divine directions to assist us on our journey through mortality and our return trip home. As Lehi and his family looked to the Liahona for direction through the wilderness to the promised land, we should let the scriptures and the teachings of the prophets serve as our map as we may make our way through the wilderness of mortality. President Uchtdorf said, we all search for happiness and we all try to find our own happily ever after. The truth is, God knows how to get there and he has created a map for you. He knows the way. The map is available to all. It gives explicit directions of what to do and where to go to everyone who is striving to come unto Christ. All we have to do is trust in our Heavenly Father. Trust Him enough to follow His plan. Keep your covenants and keep His commandments. President Uchtdorf continues, Nevertheless, not all will follow the map. They may look at it. They may think it is reasonable, perhaps even true but they do not follow the divine directions. Many believe that any road will take them to a happily ever after. As members of the church, we know that not all roads or trails lead to eternal life, to the eternal life we seek. Happily ever after will only be ours if we choose to follow the Savior and be his disciple. We are constantly making decisions, and if your life is like mine, most of those decisions are made while in survival mode. This is decision-making in the moment, instead of planning out a course and moving forward when the time is right. This is not the best way to make decisions, for when I live in survival mode, I too often fail to accomplish the things I'd prioritized in my mind. That phone call to a friend, lunch with my brother, an evening at the temple, a workout, and even what I'm going to do on vacation. It's also while I'm in survival mode that I see opportunities pass me by a weakening friendship with a kindred spirit, waning family relationships, a decrease in a desire to do the things to stay close to the spirit, decreased fitness level, and even a missed opportunity for kayaking the Nepali coast in Hawaii, which I'm not sure how I let that happen. Perhaps you are like me. Perhaps you too let the chaos of your life, your studies, your calling, your job, or your fun crowd out the opportunities the spirit has to speak to you. Perhaps your prayers have become hurried, 
or your scripture study is more reading than study. Perhaps you have reshuffled your priority, priorities and have put staying close to the spirit off to the side simply as a result of not prioritizing it. President Uchtdorf said, discipleship is the pursuit of holiness and happiness. It is the path to our best and happiest self. So it follows that pursuing and prioritizing discipleship will lead us to the best life we can build for ourselves on earth. But we have to seek it by choosing to be a disciple of Christ. We have to choose it by being forgiving, charitable, grateful, and anxiously engaged in serving others. We have to make discipleship our course. How do we know what we can do to be a disciple? How do we know what we can do to fulfill our purpose on earth and build the kingdom of God? We have to ask him through prayer. The scriptures have taught us that the Lord will give us answers to our prayers. Behold, I will tell you in your mind and in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which shall come upon you and which shall dwell in your heart. We will hear the whisperings of this, by the whisperings of the Spirit what we can do to be more like Christ. We will be quietly drawn to opportunities that will allow us to serve on his behalf. We will find ourselves using our talents to build the kingdom of God if we follow the guidance in our heart. In October General Conference, Elder Craig C. Christensen taught us that through the gift of the Holy Ghost, we receive added capacity and spiritual gifts, increased revelation and protection, steady guidance and direction, and the promised blessings and sanctification and the exaltation in the celestial kingdom. All of these blessings are given as a result of our personal desire to receive them and come as we align our lives with the will of God and seek his constant direction. Wow. When Alma gives his counsel to his son, Helaman, he too tells him to stay aligned with our heavenly father and seek his guidance. He says, Oh, remember my son and learn wisdom in thy youth. Yea, learn in thy youth to keep the commandments of God. What great counsel from both Elder Christensen and Alma. Alma continues to call on, him, on Helaman to counsel with the Lord in all thy doings, and he will direct thee for good. We know how to get the direction of the Spirit. We now have to do it. How can we allocate our time, talents, and resources to align with our purpose and stay on course? We can sometimes do it through goals. I have a lot of goals that aren't New Year's type of goals. I have the goal of being married in the temple and having and raising children in the gospel and witnessing them serve missions and raise a righteous posterity. I have the goal of serving a mission myself. I have the goal of being worthy of eternal life with my Father in heaven, with my family. I have the goal of making my earthly and my heavenly parents proud because I have heeded their counsel and made the gospel of Jesus Christ an integral part of my life. I have the goal of being happy here on earth and in the eternities. Your goals may be similar to mine. These are our individual course markings. They are the significant choices in our lives that allow us to recognize that we are in alignment with our Father in heaven. He has given us the personal guidance and direction we need to accomplish our goals. The companionship of the Holy Ghost provides us with unlimited personal revelation, direction, comfort, strength, and guidance from God. Humility and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ are essential to being worthy of personal revelation and answers to our prayers. All answers do not come when we ask for them. They often come as Alma describes our faith is growing over time as we ponder, study, and seek direction from the Lord. President Boyd K. Packer tells us that we must learn to seek the power and direction that is available to us and then follow that course no matter what. We then learn in the Doctrine and Covenants, for they that are wise and have received the truth and have taken the Holy Spirit for their guide and have not been deceived, verily I say unto you, they shall not be hewn down and cast into the fire, but shall abide the day. So we must choose to be wise and take the Holy Spirit for our guide. We can benefit from the direction of the Holy Ghost in everything we do. He will guide me, helping me avoiding cliffs while skiing, potholes while biking, and terrible snafus at work if I seek his direction and am aligned with him and his will. Prayer is our communication piece with our Heavenly Father, and the Holy Ghost is his communication piece with us. 
we must keep the line open by seeking out the Father in prayer and by living worthy of the Holy Ghost companionship. President Packer also taught us that we can always have a direct line of communication with our Father in heaven. Do not allow the adversary to convince you that no one is listening on the other end. Your prayers are always heard. You are never alone. I wish I had a great picture to share with you on this story, but no woman looks good in biking clothes, so here we go. <laughs> Over the last several years, I've participated in several road bike or cycling races with friends. To get in the full mileage, 60, 80, or 100 miles, the courses are marked on the streets by colored arrows and spray paint. There are signs at intersections, and there are usually other riders to follow. However, on more than three different occasions, we have ended up off course. On one ride, my friends and I mistakenly followed other riders off course. They, weren't, they were riding a different route than we were. On another ride, we found the rest stop from the less traveled side, as we'd apparently missed a turn or two. And yet, on another ride, we knew we were close to the finish line because of the traffic and noise, but we couldn't find the roads that led us to it. We couldn't find any markings. While on each of the road rides, my friend and I did get back to the course and finish each of the races, we learned several lessons, each of which are transferable to our lives. If we reach our, our intended destination, we must pay attention to the big and small course markings. These markings in life are not spray-painted arrows and signs, but instead they are advancements, covenants, and companionship of the Spirit. We will move with the push and pull of the world away from the path that leads to a return to our Father in Heaven if we are not committed to our course and our purpose. We must be committed and we must do all that we can to stay the course. We must look to the prophets to learn how to read the course's legend to ensure that we stay firmly planted on the straight and narrow, holding on to the iron rod with both hands. I don't know exactly when my friends and I went off course on these three occasions, but I can clearly remember when we realized it. Our surroundings weren't familiar or expected. We didn't have the biking companions we'd had before, and we, when we looked for course markings, we could not find them. There are too many things that could have distracted us and allowed us to get off course, even when we were within blocks of the finish line. What distracted us is far less important than how it happened. It happened so subtly that we didn't notice until we'd been off course, not right next to it or parallel to it, but off. So it is with the straight and narrow path. At one point in our lives, we have two feet firmly planted on it. With the change of roommates or friends, a new girl or boyfriend, a new city, schedule, or even jobs, we can slowly start moving to its edge until we realize that we are now doing things we'd never imagined doing. We haven't prayed for days or weeks. We pass on spiritual things. Our scriptures are covered in layers of dust or so many other things that indicate we haven't been feeding our testimony the nourishment it needs. Most of the time, we cannot pinpoint what changed in our lives but we know our testimony isn't as firm as it once was. Maybe we can't even remember why we keep the commandments. But there are many things that we can do to ensure that we stay on course, on the straight and narrow path. Unlike my road riding friends and I have done, we can keep a, course, we can keep a lookout for the course markings or warning signs. The prophets and the scriptures give us significant counsel on how to stay on course and live our lives with the right purpose. Elder Quinton L. Cook taught that immersion in the scriptures is essential for spiritual nourishment. We need to make sure that we are constantly feeding ourselves spiritually from the scriptures. Do you immerse yourself in the scriptures? Alma and Mother Teresa remind us of the power of small acts in our lives such as prayer, scripture study, and charity. She said, be faithful in small things because it is in them that your strength lies. And Alma taught us that by small and simple things are great things brought to pass, and small means in many instances doth confound the wise, and by very small means the Lord doth confound the wise and bringeth about the salvation of many souls. There are no small things, because combined they are our strength, and they will bring about our salvation. There are a few other seemingly small things that will have a great impact on our ability to stay true to our purpose. One of these seemingly small things is our friends. Who do we choose to associate with? Who do we choose to date, marry, seek advice from, and counsel with? Who do we play and study with? 
President Thomas S. Monson said, choose your friends with caution. We must cautiously choose who we allow to have such a great impact on our lives. We do many small things with friends. Brother Scott Robley on the Mormon Channel said that true friends treat you like a campsite. They leave you better than they found you. We all have companions in our time on Earth. They may be siblings, friends, spouses, missionary companions, and even strangers who observe us or briefly interact with us. Are you the true friend you should be to those you're with, and are they the friend they should be for you? Do your friends make it easier for you to live the gospel or not? Do they help you draw closer to the Spirit, even in small degrees? Do they leave you better than they found you, and you them? To stay on course, we will not have the strength to keep our covenants or the commandments if we do not bolster and feed our faith. Maintaining our testimony and staying on course will require righteousness and regular repentance. It will require great faith. We must be spiritually strong. We must live worthy of the Holy Ghost's companionship. Elder Todd D. Christofferson said, Faith comes by the witness of the Holy Spirit to our souls, spirit to spirit, as we hear or read the Word of God, and faith matures as we continue to feast upon the Word. We must delve into the scriptures to know what to do in times of trial, how to help others, and how to answer our questions. The answers are in them. We learn about the master teacher and his ways in the scriptures. By studying the scriptures, we develop our faith, learn about the Savior, his teachings, the commandments, our Father, and the plan of salvation. Studying the scriptures will keep us on course. President Thomas S. Monson has given us exceptional counsel for how to stay on course. He said, Obey the laws of God. They are given to us by a loving Heavenly Father. When they are obeyed, our lives will be more fulfilling, less complicated. Our challenges and problems will be easier to bear. We will receive the Lord's promised blessings. Make every decision you contemplate pass this test. What does it do to me? What does it do for me? And let your code of conduct emphasize what, not what will others think, but rather, what will I think of myself? Be influenced by that still, small voice. Open your hearts, even your very souls, to the sound of that special voice which testifies of truth. We need to open our hearts to that special voice, as President Monson said. The Holy Ghost is the only companion of constancy. All of the others will leave us, even if only temporarily to run errands, go to class, or go to work for the day. But the Holy Ghost will be a constant presence in our lives if we will live worthy of it. We control the level of influence He has in our lives. Do we listen to or ignore Him? Do we act or relax? Do we provide an environment that will allow the Holy Ghost to remain with us? Do we remove the worldly habits and customs and traditions from our lives? As the hymn by Penelope Moody Allen says, let the Holy Spirit guide. Let him teach us what is true. He will testify of Christ, light our minds with heaven's view. Let the Holy Spirit guard. Let his whisper govern choice. He will lead us safely home if we listen to his voice. Let the Spirit heal our hearts through his quiet, gentle power. May we purify our lives to receive him hour by hour. While the challenges of each day do not fade with each sunset, I know that if we can do as the prophets have counseled us, that we will be able to continue moving forward on the straight and narrow path. I also know that this path will lead us to eternal life, a life worth every amount of effort required. If we will firmly establish the purpose of our life and stay the course that leads to it, we will live in the house He has prepared for us among the mansions of our Father. Let Heavenly Father guide and direct us. Live your life with purpose. I know the gospel of Jesus Christ is true. I know that He is our Savior. I know Thomas S. Monson is a prophet of God. And I know our Father in Heaven loves us and leads us through the Holy Ghost. Of this I testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This BYU devotional address with Janie Penfield was given on February 5th, 2013. 